special guest who would like to introduce himself. Hello, my name is Cliff Strain. I'm the director of the Museum of the Farley Boat Works and also I've been an offshore fisherman for the last 40 years. So I'm going to show you two knots that have really made my life very simple. Uh, they're very dependable knots and uh, as far as the fisherman's knot, it's, I've never had one fail and that's always a consideration. And of course the bowl and knot, I'm going to teach you a simpler way to do it where you don't have to memorize some type of nursery rhyme or to remember you know, how to do it. And it's actually also called a rolling bowling or a speed bowling, this version. So the, the main thing is you always want to hold the line the same way when you grab it. So we're, I'm right-handed. I'm always going to grab the short end, the bitter end, with, with my right hand. Now I'm doing it like I'm thumbing right. So it's palm up like I'm thumbing right. I'm going to grab the long end the opposite way, like I'm saying me next. So it's palm down. Once you've got the, the line grabbed, and this could be for any size loop, uh, I'm just doing just an average size. I'm gonna, now I'm going to take the line and I'm going to create a loop right here. So all I did was twist my hand to where now both palms up. And then I'm going to take the long end of the rope and I'm going to push another loop through that loop. Now all I have to do is take the bitter end and I'm coming from my side of the, this loop. And I'm going to hold it and I'm going to pull on the long end of the rope. And that's it. So the, the advantage of bowling is no matter how hard you pull on it, you've got this release that always makes it easy to untie. And that includes if you're towing a car out of the sand, if you use a square knot, you're going to throw that rope away or cut that end off. But with a bowling, it's, it's always simpler. I'm going to do it one more time with this rope and then do it with at least one other kind of rope. So again, you always hold the short end and you may want to, you know, See this, and I'll go in slow enough to where you can follow along with me. Short end with the right hand, like your thumb and right, palm up. Grab the long end, palm down, like you're saying me next with your thumb. Flip it to create a loop. Next, I'm going to take the long end, the trailing end of the rope. I'm going to bring that loop, another loop through that loop. And then all I'm going to do is take this bitter end, come from my side of the loop. I'm just going to hold this end. And I'm going to show you what happens if you pull on this side too. Just hold it in place and then pull the other end and you have a perfect bowling. Now the reason why it's called a rolling bowling is some people end up pulling on both ends and I'll show you what happens. Okay, again, bitter end, palm up, long end, palm down, I'm flipping it. And I'm going to take the long end, come through that loop with another loop. I'm going to come from this side. This time I'm going to pull on both ends. See now it it looks like it's, it didn't quite come into the perfect shape that a bowling should have. So sometimes you have to kind of roll it into place. But you always should have this little loop that's the trigger for unlocking the knot. So uh, let me try it one more time, see if I can really mess it up. So you'll see. And this line is so slick. I'm gonna, well, that's, that's too easy. I'm trying to think how some people make a common mistake. No, no, I'm still doing it. Okay, this, this slick line, it, it, it pretty much works all the time. So let's try another line that's not so slick. Let's try some twisted hemp line right here, or cotton. Again, short end, thumb uh, facing outward, palm up. Thumb facing you, palm down on the long end. I'm going to flip it, bring up a loop. I'm going to put the short end from my side through the loop and just hold on to it to get that loop. If you pull on both ends, sometimes it, it does a weird thing. But see how easy it is to, to take this knot out? And that's the advantage of the bowline. It always comes in tight. I'm going to try it again. This time I'm going to pull on both sides and see if I get a different knot. No, nope, it's, still, it's still working. Sometimes what it'll do, if you pull too hard on this one, is it'll... Okay, 
it'll it'll roll back and you just have to roll it, but it's 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 working fine. We'll try it on one other rope and see if it does it on that really coarse rope here, which looks like a hemp rope. And you can do this on a, a full hauser, a two or three inch hauser. It'll still work. Matter of fact, when I pull boats, uh, cars that are stuck in the sand, I've got a two inch hauser in my, that I take in my truck and I'll do a bowling and I've never had one locked in place. Okay, again, short end, like you're hitching a ride, palm up, long end, palm down, flip it to make a loop, bring the long end through the loop. I'm going to come from my side. See now, that time, see how it hesitated? Because I was pulling on this end. Don't pull on that short end and you won't have that issue where it doesn't want to roll into this. But again, as long as you have this little trigger area right here, you know you've tied it correctly. And uh, this, this is a knot that will get you through a lot of things in life. It's, and, and this is much the fastest way to tie this. There's another way to tie it where you go around. And, you know, there's a saying, the fox goes into the hole, the rabbit goes in the hole, the fox goes after it goes around the tree. But I never could remember that as, and still can't. So again, one more time, palm up on a short end on my right side. Long end, I've got palm down. Flip it over to make a, a loop and a crisscross and take the long end through that loop with another loop. Come from your side of that loop and just hold this and pull on the long end. And there you have it. Pull on up. Like I say, it doesn't matter what kind of line it is, no matter how hard you pull, it is always going to come undone. All right. And you could even do that to tie two ropes together. A lot of times I do that. I'll do two bowling loops around each other, and that way you get a length and of course, the stress is, is it's not going to cause that not to cinch. And when I taught sixth grade, we used to do two ropes together, a double loop with two bowlins, and then we'd have a tug of war, and then I'd show them how easily it would come undone even after a class of 30 sixth graders had pulled on it. So that's, that's it on the bowling. And then the fishing knot, I'm going to use, this is about 60 pound test line. And you're going to want something to tie onto. A lot of times I just put the foot, the uh, rod reel on the fighting chair to where I can pull against it because you, you want to pull pretty hard on this knot to make it. But I'm going to use this bit right here that's on the boat, the cleat. And this is what's known as a double uni knot. And you want to have plenty of line to do this. So I'm going to I'm going to make sure I have about two feet of line. I won't use all of it, but I want to have plenty. So I've doubled the line, and then I'm going to come through the snap swivel right here. And it's to make the knot look really nice and work most efficiently, you really have to, let's see if I can get this to where this is on the other side of the ear. You really want to keep the two lines parallel to each other as you're doing the knot. I'm trying to figure the best way to get this out of the equation. All right, so I've pulled the loop through and I'm holding, I'm keeping a fair amount of tension. I want to have plenty of room to do this knot. And some people like to actually wet the line because we're going to slide it up, but it's, I find most times it's not necessary. All right, so I'm going to come around my finger and I'm going to take five wraps around this line and I'm holding it with my middle finger as I go and I'm keeping these two lines parallel because as I each twist it's going to be more difficult to keep them parallel. It's going to see how it's already twisting so I'm going to straighten that twist out. That's two. Straighten that twist out. Three. Stay straight there. Four. And five. And I, you can pull these down next to or you can wait till the end. So I just kind of pulled it with my finger. I'm going to go through the loop, and I'm going to come back through this bottom loop that my finger is, has created. 
Once I do that, I'm going to pull this finger out and I'm going to hold this, this knot with these two fingers just so it doesn't, they don't get, you know, they stay in alignment. I'm going to pull with both, on both lines. Now I'm going to, this is kind of a push-pull. I'm going to pull on the long end. But once I get it to the end, see how I kind of flipped around there? I'm going to tighten on that knot by pulling on this end too. And that's where sometimes having the wet line is a little advantage. And when you're done, that knot should hold. It's going to stretch eventually, but for initially you want that knot to actually hold that snap swivel snugly. So it's, the, it's not loose in there. It's, it's pretty tight. It's holding it firmly. And then at the very end, and this is always the tricky part, make sure you're going to cut off the the lines that, that are not the main line. So make sure you know which one that is. So here's the main line. We don't want to cut that. We're going to cut these three lines. And we're going to leave just a little bit there just in case the knot does decide to slip a little bit. And there you have it. You can see it's a, it's a very nice clean knot. Looks good. And uh, as I've, I've caught many a marlin and sailfish on this knot, and it's never, ever failed. So it's, it's a great knot. Now, if you're using a wine on leader, that requires different types of knots. But for just a, going on to a straight onto a snap swivel, this is a great knot. It's also great if you're going to do it for tying a hook onto a, a lure. And we can, we can just take this, we're going to cut this off. I want to show you, you could, if, if this, so you can also use this same knot for tying onto a leader. Like if you're making your own snapper leaders, you could do this same knot. And uh, you'll still want to have something to put that line around. You could do a single uni if you've got a really thick line, or you can do a double. I think a double would be difficult on this. So we're just going to do a, a single uni knot. I like to come from this side. All right, so again, we're going to pull out some length. And if this was a lighter line, I might go ahead and do a double, but we're just going to do a single. So I'm going to wrap around five times. One, two. Of course, you don't have to worry about keeping the lines parallel with a single. Three, four, and five. And then I'm going to come through this loop. And I'm going to come through that loop my fingers in. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to pull it down to where I can hold on to it when I let my, pull my finger out. And I'm pulling toward me initially to get those lines together. And then pull it from the, the long end. <clears throat> and then kind of back and forth to get a really snug fit. And there again, as you can see, it's holding that that hook very firmly. It's not, it's not, and of course, after a fish pulls on it, it might loosen up a little bit, but initially you want that nice and snug. And of course, for the single, we only have to cut off the very end. There you go. I'm gonna do the double one more time so you can see, because that's the only one that's really tricky. So we're gonna cut this really nice knot off because it came out very pretty. We're going to do that double uni knot one more time. So again, you want to have plenty of line. Don't, cut, don't sell yourself short on the amount of line you, want, you need to use to do the knot. You can always cut off the excess, excess. So the first thing I'm going to do is get these lines parallel before I take the wrap around. So I'm going to look and see and make sure I don't have a twist. Probably won't affect the effect of this knot, but it will affect how nicely it looks. And then I'm going to go five wraps, keeping, making sure I keep these, this line I'm wrapping parallel. The two lines. Two, three, four, and five. Once I get that fifth, this is going to partially lock it. I'm going to go through the loop. 
and it, it's going to naturally get, want to go to one side or the other. And then I'm going to go through the loop my finger is in. And then I like to grab that with my pinky and grab these, grab the knot firmly just to keep it nice and straight with my thumb and forefinger. And then I'm going to pull tightly. And then I'm going to pull on the long end to get it up close to the snap swivel. And it's just a little bit loose, so I'm going to, you can see there's a little bit of an extra loop right there. I'm going to try to tighten it up a little bit by pulling on the short end and then pulling again. And again, and again you know you've got it uh, when it's snug like this and it's not allowing that snap swivel ring to, to, to swivel it freely. You know you've got it nice and tightly. Nice and tight. And then all again, all you have to do is figure out which three lines that you need to cut. And leave just maybe like a centimeter of, of length at the most. And there you have it. The double uni knot. So we've made kind of a mess of all these lines that we borrowed from the Farley Boat Works. So I'm going to show you the proper way to stow a line uh, and just make you be, you know, it's just a nice way to do it. If you're helping somebody out, you've been invited on a boat, you'll impress the boat owner when you do this. So of course, you just take wraps between your thumb and your elbow. And when you get down toward the end, probably about this much left, I'm going to hold it my hands and I'm going to take a couple wraps around the middle and then I'm going to take a loop push it through all the other loops bring it back here and I'm going to take this bitter end here and I'm going to use it as a cinch so you can also double it and end up with a loop where you can hang the line but if they're not hanging the line that's the best way to do it and there you have it